Now we're going to look at the types of bonds that we see in single, double, and triple bonds. You have two common types of bonds, sigma bonds and pi bonds. These have different shapes, uh, which are called symmetries of the bonding orbitals. The sigma bonds are always directly on the bond axis, so it's directly between the two nuclei. And in a bond, it always has one and only one sigma bond. So for H2, um, we have one bond between the, the two atoms, and that's going to be a sigma bond. So our electron density is concentrated directly between the two nuclei. That negative charge of the two electrons is pulling the two nuclei together, holding the atom together. So it's right on the bond axis. The bond axis is right between the two. So that's a definition of a sigma bond is right on the bond axis. But again, we can only have one sigma bond between any two atoms. A pi bond is on both sides of the bond axis. That's one orbital on both sides of the bond axis. So one orbital holding a pair of electrons is on two sides of the bond axis. So for oxygen, O2, which is a double bond, the first bond is a sigma bond. So we always have that sigma bond first. And then the second bond is from un unhybridized p orbitals. And it also can form from unhybridized d orbitals. Um, and we see that when we exceed the octet, one structures is using the d orbitals for the pi bonds. So we have um, a sigma bond and a pi bond of unhybridized p orbitals. So the p orbitals on both uh, atoms line up and then they overlap each other. Um, so the double bond, all double bonds are going to consist of one sigma, bond, one sigma bond and one pi bond. And then when we have a triple bond, it's going to be a sigma and two pi bonds. So nitrogen has a triple bond. So we have our sigma right between the two uh, atoms, right between the two nuclei. One pi bond is going to be above and below that bond axis. And the second pi bond is in front and behind the bond axis. So we have three bonds, but they're not overlapping. They're each occupying separate spaces around the, the atom. But uh, with the pi bonds, the electrons are moving between the two sides, even though the electron density goes down to zero at the bond axis. So our nitrogen has a um, sigma and two pi total the three, the triple bond. Oxygen has one sigma and one pi, the total of the double bond. Hydrogen has the one sigma only. So let's look at uh, acetylene. So we're going to have a sigma, a sigma, and a sigma. So between each bond we have one and only one sigma. So we're going to have three sigma. And then between the two carbons was a triple bond. So we're going to have a pi bond and a second pi bond. So they look like they're opposite each other right now, but one will be above and below and the other one will be in front and back. So we have two pi bonds. So we have three sigma and two pi bonds. So let's look at the delocalized pi bond. So the pi is from unhybridized p orbitals. So when we have what's called a conjugated alkene, alkene is a uh, carbon compound with a double bond in it. Conjugated means that we're doing uh, alternating between double, single, double bonds. So the smallest one that we can have would involve four carbon atoms. So we have two double bonds separated by a single bond. That's our smallest conjugated alkene. 
So 1,3-butadiene is one of these compounds. And each of the carbon has an unhybridized p orbital on it. So these four orbitals will actually make four molecular orbitals. We'll talk about molecular orbitals next. And each of those molecular orbitals is going to be overlapping all four of these carbons. The lowest energy or most stable one is going to be all the same phase between all these p orbitals. So we have one long orbital between all four carbons. And that will contain a pair of electrons that will be moving across all four of those carbon atoms. And we have a couple others with a, a little bit different shapes from them, but they still allow the pairs of electrons to travel through all four atoms. Benzene is the smallest category of organic compounds called aromatic compounds. So they have a ring of six carbons, each with the sp2 hybridization. So sp2, that means we have three bonds and one unhybridized p orbital. So benzene has a special stability. It forms easily when we're burning organic compounds because uh, it's just so stable. So we're going to have, uh, for benzene, those six orbitals all blend together again, making a molecular orbital that goes through all of these. So there will be a, a ring of electron density both above and below the uh, benzene ring. And each pair of electrons is free to move throughout the whole ring. And this ring structure actually stacks together. So adding one more ring on here. Uh, so we have two rings, but it just keeps going, uh, forming um, in a monolayer of graphene and a stack layer of graphite. And both graphene and graphite are uh, electrically conducting because of this overlap of these orbitals. So for naphthalene, we're going to have a ring going around the whole double ring. So all the electrons have access to moving around throughout the, the whole ring, the whole double ring that we have. And so delocalized bonding with uh, these aromatic rings, and this is still aromatic. And they are the stack on to make larger and larger of these aromatic ring structures, all with delocalized pi bonding with electrons free to move throughout the whole structure. 